Regression Analysis using Brittle. We now have this output here, and we want to ask, well, what does this mean? How do we interpret this? Now, remember, we said in our slides that there are four components that we want to look at, and we want to look at these in a very particular order. The first is the F-test. So the F-test is located here. We have two values associated with it, the actual value of the F-statistic and the p-value of this f-statistic, or probability value. Following the f-test, we want to interpret the r-squared. Once we've interpreted the r-squared, we're going to interpret the t-ratios, and linked with the t-ratios are the p-value for those t-ratios. And then the fourth and final component we analyze is the coefficient. So looking at this, we'll start with our f-test. Specifically, hone in on the p-value of the f-test. This is the value that tests the significance of the overall model. So is the model statistically significant? Does the R squared equal zero? Our null hypothesis here, or the hypothesis which we're testing, is that R squared equals zero. The alternative is that the R squared does not equal zero. Before we progress any further, with this p-test, we need to reject the null hypothesis. So we need to say that the R squared does not equal zero. The p-value should be less than 0.1. If the p-value is less than 0.1, this means that the model is statistically significant. Now, in this case, what we can see is we have a p-value of 3.5e to the minus 106. So what does that e to the minus 106 mean? e to the minus 106 basically means we take the decimal place here and move it 106 places to the left. So the p-value we have here is 0.0, a little over 100 zeros, 3, 5. So this value is most definitely less than 0.1. As it's less than 0.1, we reject the null hypothesis that the R squared is equal to zero, and we say that this model is statistically significant. Now, once we've identified that this model is statistically significant, the next step we look at is the R squared. The R squared is known as the coefficient of determination. This value lies between zero and one, and tells us the proportion of the variation in the dependent variable explained by the independent variables. The larger this number, the better. In this case, we have a value of 0.32, which means that 32% of the variation in wages is explained by our model, which is quite reasonable. The remaining variation is explained by other factors which we haven't captured. Once we've interpreted that, we want to move on to the t-ratio and the p-values of those. So each t-ratio will have an associated p-value, and we have a t-ratio for each individual variable. Now the t-ratio is cal calculated as the coefficient minus whatever our null hypothesis is, which in this case is almost always zero. So it simplifies a lot of the time to the coefficient divided by the standard error. Again, what we're looking predominantly at are the p-values. If the p-values are less than 1, that variable is statistically different from 0. Now, we have three particular p-values, and these also apply to the f-test. These are 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. If a value is less than 0.1, we're 90% confident that that variable is statistically different from 0. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we're 95% confident that that value is less than zero, or different from zero. And if the p-value is less than 0 0.01, we're 99% confident that that value is different from zero. So take a look at each of our p-values. This p-value is 0 point, and look at e to the minus 12, 0 point, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 2, 5, 1. So it's definitely less than 0.1, it's less than 0.05, and it's less than 0.01. So the constant is statistically significant at the 99% level. We can see that also indicated by three stars. Three stars indicates less than, uh, that the p-value is less than 0.01, and it's significant at the 99% confidence level. We can see the same for female, significant at 99%. We can see the same for the variable non-white. This is 0 0.0022, which is less than 0 0.01, so significant at the 99% level. For the variable union, we can see that this is 0 0.03. So it's less than 0 0.05, so we're 95% confident, 
but it's not less than 0 0.01, so we're not 999 percent confident. This only receives two asterisks indicating this. Education and experience are both significant at the 99 percent level. Once we've looked at these, the final element we look at is the coefficient values. What we can see from the coefficient values is the directionality and the impact on the dependent variable. Now, in our case, the dependent variable is hourly wage, so we're talking about wages. If we look at the first variable, female, which we've seen is statistically significant, the coefficient value is minus 3.07. Minus 3.07 means that, on average, a female will earn $3.07 less than a male counterpart hourly. So we're picking up gender discrimination in wages. We can see the same in terms of our non-white variable, with a value of minus 1.56. This indicates that a non-white worker will earn $1.56 less than a, female, or, uh, than a white worker. And we can follow on down with the rest. Unionized workers earn $1.09 more than non-unionized workers. And for every year of education extra an individual has, they earn $1.37 more. For every year extra experience someone has, they earn 16 cent more. So our regression model, once we work our way through it, allows us to identify the impact of these variables on our dependent variable. 